Good morning, class 11A. This is Ms. Seishu. This is video number 2 for the topic Transport in Mammals. The references are in the course book, page number 158, 159, and 160. So, up to now, we have completed the blood circulation in mammals and the three types of vessels in the circulatory system and also structure of arteries, capillaries and veins we have seen and in the roles of the blood circulation system how the tissue fluid will be formed and etc we are going to see today. So the topic the next we are going to look for the keywords. Today's topic we are going to see exchange in the tissues and the formation of tissue fluid so for this subtopic the keywords are let's read with me tissue fluid bypass vessels lymph capillaries net outflow net inflow lymph node lymph circulation so, let me say what is tissue fluid. Tissue fluid is nothing but a watery liquid. It is very similar in the composition to plasma that is passing away through the gaps that are present in the capillary walls from to vary in size in different parts of the body. And however, the red blood cells, platelets and most blood proteins are not present in tissue fluid. Instead, these are retained in the capillaries. And what this tissue fluid is doing further? Tissue fluid bathes the living cells of the body. Nutrients are supplied from this fluid and carbon dioxide and waste products of metabolism are carried away by it just go for a picture tissue fluid so here you can see small artery this is the arteriole here cells inside the blood venule small vein and here tissue fluid this is the tissue fluid and here you can see capillaries this is the lymphatic duct so Here you can see the tissue fluid. How this is working? In this tissue fluid, you can see the cells take in nutrients. Example, oxygen, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins also with ions. These, these are absorbing, these cells are absorbing from the tissue fluid. And here near to the venule, these cells will be given out. These cells will be giving out of the waste products. Example, carbon dioxide, unwanted metabolites, excess oil, ions, etc. Okay. Near to the arteriole, the cells present in the blood, these will be absorbing the nutrients and after passing it to the venule, near to the venule, the blood cells are giving out waste products. Just keep this in the mind, okay? So, this is the tissue fluid formed from blood plasma. Where it is formed? This is the tissue fluid formed from the blood plasma. And here you can see the lymphatic capillary. Near to the lymphatic uh, capillaries, the capillaries which are present is also known as bypass vessel. This is the bypass vessel. So, what is the function, the role of the bypass vessel? Which tissues of the body are being served by the blood circulation is regulated. When tiny precapillary sphincture, this is the, here you will have the sphincture. In the course book, you can see 
in page number 158 okay so that sphincter muscles are contracted blood flow to that capillary bed is restricted to a minimum minimum most blood is then diverted through bypass vessel it is shunted to other tissues and organs in the body so like that the tissue fluid is constantly being formed at the arteriole end being formed at the arteriole end of the capillary bed near to the capillary network this is the network of the capillaries we can say so near near to the arteriole end it is forming and it is essential for the efficient exchange of materials between the blood and the cells as i told you from the cells which are near to the arteriole they will be absorbing the nutrients and the cells which are present near to the venule they are existing sorry they are given giving out waste products like that this is the process is doing constantly being drained away from the cells by lymph vessels is that clear so in the formation of the tissue fluid you will see the process is called hydrostatic pressure diffusion gradient and osmotic movement here you can see at arterial end blood pressure here greater that means high blood pressure with the pressure of tissue fluid gives some materials are forced out of the capillaries this is the tissue fluid okay here you can see high pressure in the arteriole <clears throat> and then here the tissue fluid body cells and these are red blood cells here is the capillary bed okay so here you can see how these processes are taking place in the tissue fluid this is the uh, from here you can see this is the end of the arteriole here you can see end of the venule from here the blood flows to this side to reach the venule and from the venule the blood reaches where to the heart okay so now we will see what are the processes are going on and the nutrients how it is taking in and out so in ultrafiltration here you can see the ultrafiltration of water and small molecules of oxygen and glucose and amino acids due to the hydrostatic pressure these all releasing here okay from the blood cells because of the hydrostatic pressure the process is called ultrafiltration because of the ultrafiltration these all you can see water and the small molecules of oxygen glucose and also amino acids are giving out and then in the next process called diffusion gradient oxygen and nutrients required by respiring cells and the third one is osmotic movement of water in the blood in capillary this is the capillary the blood in capillary is moving like this way these all plasma proteins and these the red ones are blood cells red blood cells from these you are getting <coughs> water oxygen glucose and also with amino acids and ions this is called net outflow this is one of our keyword net outflow and then next one is net inflow what are taking inside the capillary after finishing these processes called ultrafiltration diffusion gradient and osmotic movement together called as net outflow so what is taking inside in the net inflow inflow means taking inside so in this you can see osmotic movement of water taking water inside and waste metabolites in the diffusion gradient 
taking inside and also hydrostatic pressure reduced here okay 